Hello Internet. Today we have Gigabyte 1080 Ti, ours Extreme Gaming. Aside from a flimsy heatsink frame, great job Gigabyte. It came with a thick layer of dust. So let's take it apart and see why I don't like Gigabyte cards. Since this card was never opened before, I have to slowly pry it out of the board. Being aggressive here is not an option. I didn't notice this at the time of the recording, but if you look at the ripped pad, and then look at the pad on the left, and then on the right, you notice anything? Me neither. I will explain what's wrong here later in the video, so stick around. Fortunately, Gigabyte made it easier to remove the heatsink frame by simply loosening two screws both on the front and the back. This allows me to easily disconnect the fan shroud from the heatsink and give it a bath. I'll go clean that real quick and uh, here is the result. Okay, let's check some measurements. 12 volt, kilo ohms. I'll check this fuse here just in case. 1.8 volt under 900 ohms, very good. 12 volt kilo ohms. 5 volt just under 6k. Another 12 volt here at the top, also kilo ohms. PEX around 70 ohms. Memory 65. And the V core is too low to measure with my cheap multimeter, so the only thing I can do to measure the V core is to measure it in relationship to the 12 volt. Because if they are shorted, GPU is 100% dead. Last voltage rail is 3.3 and this one is also looking good at 4.6k. Moving on to the first pair of data line output. First pair seems to be equal. Now on the back, same thing with the first pair of the input data lines also looking good. Clock reference looks good. Hex reset look good and there's no reason not to plug it in but I still like to use my data line tester just to eliminate any variables along the way and it looks like we have a pass so let's power it on and see how hungry it is looks like just under 2 amps which means something is wrong with the GPU power phase we'll look into that later next we check if the board has all the power it needs to function and since we have 1 volt on PEX, that means we have V core and memory. Which automatically means we have both 5 volt and 1.8. So there's no reason why we can't plug it in and see what's going on. And then I thought, why not do one more test with an oscilloscope and see if there are any issues. And what do you know? Looking at this memory phase signal, which by the way is a perfect signal. The other phase does not look good. There's a number of potential causes for this. It could be the MOSFETs, their drivers, or any capacitors that are part of that circuit. One can only guess at this point. So I will start from the most suspicious to the least suspicious and we'll see what we find. First I decided to swap these MOSFETs and see if the bad signal will swap with the good one. But it didn't. So we've eliminated MOSFETs. I also replaced this line of capacitors. They were exposed to excessive heat, which caused them to turn dark yellow, potentially becoming dry and not working properly. But this also didn't help. Next on the list is the controller that controls those MOSFETs. Let's see if it makes any good connection to the MOSFETs by checking for resistance on pins that's supposed to go to the gate of the MOSFET. All looks good, and because there's no way I can swap phases on this controller, I'll just swap the controller and see if it helps. Sadly, that did not help either. The only thing left is to mess around with the capacitors, specifically these two right here. I had them swapped, and for whatever reason, signal became normal on both phases. I expected the good signal and the bad signal to swap places, but instead, they're both looking good. 
strange. But okay, not going to complain about that. If you look at the heatsink, there should have been a thermal pad to contact with the capacitors and the MOSFETs. The funny thing is that the card came from a factory with no pads in this area, so I had to add some of my own. How could they miss that? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why I don't like Gigabyte, MSI, ASUS, or anything else for that matter, except for EVGA. The other cooling problem I noticed that if you look at the thermal pad on the right and how it has a layer of dirt on it compared to the pad on the left, which has clean spots, that means that the pad on the right was never making any contact with the capacitors for the GPU core, which was causing them to go hot and forced the vCore phase controller to work so hard it began to draw much more power than it should have been just to keep up. Which explains why the cart was using nearly 2 amps doing practically nothing. And maybe that's why these two pins on the controller are shorted out. And I later replaced that controller and the short was gone. Okay, so let's put this cart back together and have a look under the heatsink. I think we have a pretty good contact with the pads. This should prevent this problem from happening in the future, so... Whatever left now is to power it on, do some simple memory test while we're at it. And looks like it's a pass. And I guess this is it for you today. And for your information, it took nearly two months to fix this card. Because A, I have a full-time job, and it takes a month to get parts from China, which I had to order twice for this card, and otherwise, with a problem like that, there's... There's a lot of guesswork, which takes a lot of time and it does not pay very well. And as for you, I would greatly appreciate if you guys just leave me a comment, whatever it is, give this video a like, and if you want, subscribe for more, and I'll see you later in my later videos. Have a good day. Bye-bye.